If I create a video because of your comment, I'll give you a shout out. So be sure to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. Today's video is going to be covering how to hook up a button in a circuit so that you can use it in your program. It seems like a pretty simple concept, right? Um, you just plug in the button, you put, put the ground on one side, put the pin on the other. When you push the button, it should drive it low, right? That's not always the case. So I guess to get started, um, I'll talk about the, the button itself. So if you look at the bottom of the button here, you'll see that there are two lines running uh, in the video. It looks vertical. So what that's showing you is that these two pins here are connected to each other. And these two pins here are connected to each other. So they're basically the same exact thing. So what you want is you want to hook up your connections from here to here. That way you're bridging the button gap. Okay, so since I want to go from here to here, I want those on different um, lines on my breadboard. And just a note, when you get this button new, these pins will kind of be bent. Uh, it's helpful if you take a pair of pliers and straighten them out. Um, it's already hard enough for these to plug into the breadboard, but when the pins are curved, it's even more difficult. I'm going to plug this in here. And okay, and what I have here is two buttons. Okay, so what I was talking about as far as um, it not being as simple as just hooking up one side of the button and the other side of the button is that you have what's called a tri-state logic. And what that means is you have a a low signal, then you have a high signal, and then you have something in between called a high impedance. And what, what happens then is it's basically the same as setting your pin as an input pin and then just leaving the wire hanging or not having anything hooked up to your pin. What happens is this wire itself, because it's not connected to ground or to a power signal, it ends up acting as an antenna and it will pick up any sort of electronic noise that you have uh, in the vicinity. So actually, as you can see on my oscilloscope, I have um, my probe here, I have hooked up to ground, and then I have the probe itself hooked up to the pin that does not have a pull down resistor. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But basically this is this wire here, this pin is in a floating state. So it's able to pick up all sorts of noise. That's why you see when I touch the wire, the signal changes, you can see that there's kind of a wobbly signal. Now it's not really all that much. But if you had a pair of motors running on your circuit, um, this could create a lot more noise, especially when they start up or when they stop, uh, because motors create a lot of EMI. So what this is doing is it's showing you, okay, so see now when I push the button, I have a nice high signal because I have five volts here indicated by these red wires, five volts on the one side of the button. And then the second side of the button is where my probe is. And that's also where my pin is. So when I push this button, it sends five volts to the pin but it also sends five volts to my oscilloscope probe. And you can see I have a nice clean signal because I'm actually connecting that section to a positive voltage. Same thing is if I hook this up to ground, see, and, and same thing, this is basically acting as an antenna for my oscilloscope as well. When I hook this up to ground, I get a nice clean signal. But here's the problem, okay? So I can't just hook this up to ground and then have the button connect power to ground because that's going to short things out. So what you do is you add what's called a pull down or a pull up resistor. Now in this case, I have a pull down. That just means my resistor goes from where my pin would normally connect to ground. So it's essentially creating a connection for my pin to access to ground and therefore going to give, it's going to give me a clean signal. So if I plug this in here, now you can see my signal is very clean. And when I push this button, I get a nice high signal, a nice low signal. It doesn't matter how much I touch this. It's still a pretty clean signal. Now, if I go over here and I actually touch the wire itself, I get all sorts of interference. So you can see how having a floating pin can be a bad thing. Okay, now, like I said, there's pull down and pull up. In this case, it's a pull down, which means that I have 5 volts or high power on one side and this resistor is going to ground. So what's going to happen is it's going to pull my pin down to ground. So I'm going to get a low signal 
until I get some sort of other signal coming from some other source. I can just as easily, uh, I'm going to unplug this for this case, I could just as easily make this a pull up resistor by plugging this in over here on the high signal. So now you can see I have a nice clean high signal. And then if I tied this wire the other side to ground, then I'll get a low signal. But it's still clean. So this is just the reverse. So here I have a pull up resistor. The first case I had a pull down resistor. Um, it's really just up to the user. Uh, sometimes it depends on what you're doing. If you're getting uh, some sort of signal, you might want a, a high or a low. But it's really up to you to decide whether you want to pull down or pull up. Now the other thing is, and I'll get into this in my other video, which is going to talk about how to program the button. There is the option of having an input pull-up, which is a pull-up resistor that's built into the microcontroller itself. So you actually don't need to worry about doing this. The only dif difference is you only have an option of a pull-up resistor. So in that case, you will always have a high signal. So that's all I wanted to cover. Um, I just wanted a short video to cover how to hook up a button um, in case you weren't aware. I'll get into another video where I'll tell how to program a button. I didn't want to put the two together so that you'd have to watch the two parts. Uh, this way you can just choose which one you want to see. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe.